all serious. I know when you transferred into Alabama, that was a goal, and the season was up and down. But uh, that experience in Knoxville to lose that first game the way you did, come back and beat, beat them too straight. Just let me ask you what that feels like. Going to the World Series, but do it the way you did. You know, losing that first game, it was a heartbreaker. And, you know, I think it's pretty obvious how that went and how we felt about that. And coming off the next two days, doing what we did, you know, the rain delay, the 14 innings, all of that, being able to do that was something truly really special. And it really shows what we're capable of. And I'm excited to see what we can do. Yeah, you know, a lot of us, me included, didn't think you would win the Knoxville Regional. Now you did, and I know now it's like, I stop now, right? Go we'll out there and, and do some damage. Exactly. You know, there was only a couple people that even had us pick here to win that regional. There was only a couple people that had us pick to even win our home. And so, you know, getting to prove all those people wrong, it says a lot about us. And, you know, going out there, we're going to play loose, you know, forget about what everybody says, do what we do, and have fun and play. Final for me, when Valentine hit that grand slam, of course, you didn't know at the time of what their legs were going to come. But it had to be a relief. Not knowing the game wasn't over, I get that. But to have a four, four spot early was risky. The, book, the, the dugout must have just said, well, we, we got this. It was, you know, as soon as that happened, we're like, okay, let's go. Like, here we go. This is, this is what we came here for. And getting the stop on them early, you know, that's, that's what won the game. It did. It helped a lot. Getting to shut them out, it was quick. It was the first inning, you know. Sure. That's what we did, and then the rain delay happened, went in, had some fun for a couple hours, and came out on top. Final one for me, uh, Murph staying the way that he stayed, continuing to say it's what's in front of us. Like I said, a lot of people, me included, were doubting whether this team could do it. What did that mean to your team to have a coach that never gave up? You know, it, it allows us to play free, and it goes back to that. And, you know, the coaches never gave up on us, and so we never gave up on ourselves. And like you said, there was a lot of people that doubted us, and we tried to put all that behind us and be where our feet were, and that's what we wanted. Kayla, talking about um, just how this team is different from literally February, I just want to know your thought process with that last pitch in Knoxville and having that feeling of your friends sprinting to you in the circle. Just what was that feeling like? You know, yeah, I mean, we, we've talked about it. Everybody knows it. Everybody sees it. We are a completely different team. And what we've done now, it shows what we really are capable of. And throwing that last pitch and watching that ball go to first base, I mean, it makes me want to tear up just talking about it right now. It was a dream come true. You know, everybody talks about that when they're a little girl, really, you know, playing softball. And getting to be a part of it with this team, it's something truly special. It was a long weekend for you in the circle. How's your arm feeling? Oh, we're great. We're ready to roll. <laughs> What was the turning point to make you a different team than today than you were back in February? What was the key turning point? It was just really focusing on trusting our process, trusting the work that we put in. You know, we've talked a lot about bending, don't break. And so going through those games, the hard times that we've gone through, all of the, you know, like what Mer said, we had surgeries this year. We've had a lot of ups and downs. And just kind of moving past that and worrying about the next game is really what, really what did it. Have you guys been able to just kind of ride that underdog and just enjoy it? Oh, we love it. We love being the underdog, you know. Nobody expects us to, to win. They haven't expected this out of us this entire time. And getting to prove everybody wrong, it's made it so much more fun. Are there any concerns about the fatigue factor? No, we're ready to roll. You know, we got we had yesterday off, and we're flying out today, and we'll hit practice hard tomorrow and play on Thursday. What's your favorite dugout prop? Oh, you know, there's a lot. <laughs> I don't know, the palm tree, you know, it stands out. Uh, we've got a few more surprises coming out this week. So are the props on the plane? Yes, the props are, no, the props are on the bus. They're already in OKC. <laughs> Following up on the underdog deal, I get the sense it really does free you up a little bit. Not that there's not pressure, but, but there's less pressure when you're coming from behind, so to speak. It does, you know, like I said, we love being the underdog, you know. Again, going back, nobody expects us to win. We, the pressure's on the other team, not us. You know, we get to play free, get to do what we what we do and have fun with it. So we're going to keep going Thank you. All right. Well, uh, you did it. If you going back to the College Bowl yes. Series, and some would say against all odds. Uh, yes. Just talk to me about how you pulled it off this past weekend. We just had all that grit mindset, the confidence going in there. We knew that it was all or nothing. It was either our season or we were making the World Series. So we just had to lay down on the field and just do our best for our seniors and help them keep on going. Make it do. That first game, you won. And you didn't. And to have to come back and then win back to back games. Uh, a lot of resolve, I'm sure. Was there any after that first game any doubt we have been at all? We didn't have doubt. We knew we, we played our game the first game. We just didn't pull through on the bus, helping the offense out either. So I knew we just had to pick it up the next two games. We'll be fine. We had that confidence going in. We weren't doubting ourselves at all.
Beaver was saying you kind of like the underdog role, kind of frees you up a little bit. Do you sense that too? Oh, for sure. I mean, nobody expects it from you, so you just creep up and get after it and then shot the world. How many Are you nervous? I'm not nervous. Uh, we played here last year. It was such a fun experience, and I'm just ready to get back out there again. What have you thought about the first comers to, who haven't exactly done this before? I mean, the stage we've been on all year has been a huge stage in general. Our fans at our stadium are just absolutely insane. They're amazing to have. They help us out all the time. So we're getting used to that big stage every single time we play at home. So just coming to the World Series, there's going to be a bigger crowd and everything, but the girls know it. We play together, we stick together, and we just play as a team. The offense has found some clutch moments over the last two weekends. What kind of confidence does that give you going into the biggest stage? Same thing going in, just working hard at our own craft. Just work. Oh, shoot. All right, sorry. Who is it? The, question? the offense has found some uh, has been really clutch in the last two weekends. What has has those moments really given to you all as far as confidence for this coming weekend? Just honestly, even more confidence because we know that we can do it against the most the top three like team pitching wise for like against Carl Pickens and Godshaw. So just going in with a lot of confidence and see what we face. I want to follow up on the offense because it was a struggle in the SEC. It really was. It was. And even when we got into the regional, you won a one nothing game, then it's 1-1 in the ninth against Southeastern. And Valentine gets a two-run homer. You want to score five times, and you scored nine runs the next day in the first inning. What was it that just, it just seemed like it just kind of all turned on at once? Yeah, I mean, just like I said a minute ago, I mean, that's just our season. We had we had to get it all out on the plate, all the line, just defense-wise, offense-wise, pitching. We knew if we didn't come through, I mean, the season's over. So we had that confidence going in just to push through and do the best we can. Kinley, you have many, your team has many different mottos. There's Mudita, Ben Don't Break, Gritty Not Pretty. What is just some advice that you would give to yourself back in February just to see where you are now and to look back on yourself from before? Yeah, I just honestly just realize that things do happen. There's nothing you can do about it. I mean, we had, again, like Murph's been saying, we haven't had the best season going into it, but right now it doesn't matter anymore. So just honestly just go with the flow and just realize that everything's going to be okay. We just got to keep fighting and just keep pushing through. What's your favorite dugout prop? <sighs> I'm going to say the big palm tree. The big palm tree. That was decorated a lot by KJ and Riley Valentine and all of them. So they they did the work on that thing. And it, it was staying right beside me every time I was at the dugout. So it was, it was exciting. Great. Thank, you. Thank you all so much. Thanks, Kevin. Green well, you like themes. I was thinking this morning, uh, what about the classic Jeff Bridges, Richard Moore film from 1984 against all odds? <laughs> That's, I've seen that before, actually. I'm old enough that I know what that is. And, you know, I just talked to an alum, Katie Johnson Rooney, on the way here, and she's like, we're pulling buckets. <laughs> is this really happening? And I said, Katie, it's the same response I've had. And everybody should be so proud of this group because. You know, they could have listened to the negativity. Me. <laughs> and they didn't. And I didn't. The staff didn't. And it's one of those years where you literally saw a team grow up right in front of your eyes. You know, we had three surgeries during this season. And I told the media up in uh, Knoxville, it was catcher, pitcher, center field. It's not like, you know, three important positions. It was three of the biggest positions. <laughs> and they literally had surgery during the season. And it's a credit to AC Atenka, our training staff, led by Jeff Allen. The team doctors were incredible. And somehow, some way, the, all three of them are back and better than ever. And I think Beaver just was named All-American today by one source, and hopefully she'll get one, another one tomorrow. But for them to do what they did, just to come back and play, is a, is a miracle in itself. Murph, the, the, it had been such a struggle offensively in the SEC. And you get into regional, you win a one nothing game, that's 1-1 one, one in the that's ninth the in Southeastern. Valentine hits a two run home run, you score one, score five, and then nine the next day. So it's kind of like the lid came off. Exactly. Right. Right. And you're exactly right. That one hit is all he needed. And Riley did it, and then she's done it again. Uh, you know, the Grand Slam against Tennessee, and it was such a silly start to the beginning. Two Ks, a duck fart, a hit by pitch, a hit by pitch. And she almost hit her again. She almost got Riley on the first pitch to her. And then the second pitch, I think she was like, I gotta get one across the plate. And Riley sat on it and, and you know got it out for a grand slam. And, and then the weirdest part was we didn't take the field. And we sat in the locker room for three hours. And my biggest worry was all the momentum was just gone away. 
I really did. I was like, man, I, I, I really thought if we could have played right then, we could have scored some more runs right away. But this happened for three hours, and then the other, the, the hero of that came to me was Brisky. Giving the ball to a freshman for won the World Series, and she went out there like she was, you know, a fourth-year player with no worry, uh, just no nerves. And I think you know you're going to see her for the rest of her career just like that. After that gut richer in Game One, I watched her post game press conference. I think really absolutely anger. But you were you were I I couldn't believe how positive were you. You just kept saying it's still in front of us. Yeah, I mean I. Was there any doubt? No, because I really felt we outplayed them. You know, we out hit them two to one. Uh, they had twice as many errors. Uh, pitched a great game, just one silly play. And then I felt so bad for Callie, and she balled for two hours in the locker room. And that's, you know, that's not her fault. You know, we have plenty of chances to score. And then the next day, she makes play after play after play. And then she makes the play Sunday that she uh, skies four feet in the air and snags a line drive that would have been a double. That was a web jam that we've never seen when that was one. Um, so it just, I don't know, everything just played out well. I know the lady cherished you this underdog role and you embraced it. Now, though, how do you hit the reset button? Hey, yeah, this is an accomplishment, buddy. But it's not over. We're not going out there just to make an appearance. Well, we had uh, two two guest uh, speakers, I guess you could say. On, uh, I don't know if you heard this, but they called on my phone Thursday night. Caleb McClendon, number one. And then number two was Nate Oates. And uh, he stepped away from one of his daughter's birthday parties to call us and say, dude, this is the same thing as us. And I knew that all year long. I just had that feeling. Like, even Coach Saban's last year, you know, they lose a tough game. Don't play very well against South Florida. Everybody's saying the sky's falling. And then they just started to improve. And it really has mirrored our season. Football first, basketball second, and then softball third. Um, you know, we're going broke now. Coach, can you give us an insight on your pitching staff, the consistency to basically hold the team down while the offense is struggling and get you right here? Unreal. You know, I got to credit Lance McMahon, our pitching coach, who's in his second year. He has just done a hell of a job. I mean, every kid trusts him. To, to call pitches for 14 innings, you know, I'm nervous enough just sitting there. I'm not doing anything. He's calling pitch after pitch after pitch, and 165 for Beaver alone in 10 innings. And... Uh, it's just uh, remarkable what he's done, but all of them have bought in. Um, they're, they're just low maintenance kids on and off the field. They do what they're supposed to do. And, you know, when uh, I had a couple people um, text me when Beaver came into the game the other night, and the look on her face was, you're about to be dealt with, kind of look. And, um, you know, you, you can't coach that. She's just got that it factor. And um, she works well with Lance. 100%. You touched on Riley. Can you expound on her moment from Saturday getting thrown out on the double, what would have been a double, and then <laughs> responding to that? Yeah, um, you know, she had a plan. She's been really good with her plans lately, and she'll tell everybody in the dugout, this is what I'm going to do. And she told everybody she's going to get off the plate, uh, get up a little bit in the box, look for the first strike on the outside corner, and rip it. She did that. And uh, missed a home run by like four feet. Uh, and then Tennessee played tremendous defense all weekend. Every throw was on the money. Every outfielder made every play, except for the one in the 14th inning. Uh, but it was cool that Riley got that double as well. Um, but she has just been getting better and better and better and getting more comfortable. And I think the hit against Southeastern, the, the home run in the ninth inning, really has propelled her confidence-wise. Coach, you know your team very well. Uh, any concerns on your part uh, going into the World Series about the potential fatigue factor? No. No, and you know, as a matter of fact, we didn't get home till like 3.45 Monday morning. Um, three hour rain delay will do that. Uh, so we gave them Monday off, which was our technically our day off for the week. And then today, we said, just get on the plane at one. Um, because, you know, I learned from Coach Saban a long time ago, one of his press conferences, probably with you guys, he says, one day off is good, two, day, two days off is awesome. And I've listened to that for a long time. And, um, I'm like the type of guy who, if, they're, if the players are tired, it's my fault. And so I'll ask a senior, hey, you tired, you need a day off. And if they hesitate, they're getting a day off because that means they need a day off. So we've tried our best um, to play our best at the end. And I think one of the reasons why is we're fresh. There's one or two more. Has it kind of pissed you off 
with that under underdog role, knowing hey, is your guys are still Alabama, and like even despite the injuries, you should, like you're still expected to be here, but no one, still no one thought that. Oh, it, you know, it's a blessing and a curse. This is it's Alabama football. It's the New York Yankees, it's the Dallas Cowboys. I mean, seriously, uh, I always use those references. But um, you know, we're one of only three schools in the country that have been to the World Series more than we haven't, and it's remarkable. Arizona and UCLA are the other two. Alabama. When I started, we were playing slow pitch in high schools. That's how far we've come. This is just, far. This is unbelievable. Yeah, and Bowers. We upgraded to Bowers, Gary. Um, but just to see how it's, it's where it's come from, and now and seeing you guys here, it's just remarkable. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate you guys being out here. Uh, because when you pay attention to the sport, so does everybody else. Coach, I was watching you in Nashville, watching uh, Kristen with that hit, and I'm like, oh, there's Murph yeah. sprinting, the happiest man I've seen this whole season. Um, just talk about the emotion with that and bringing that momentum into Oklahoma. Well, I, you know, when I when she got up to bat, the first thing I thought of was last year, she hit a walk-off against UCF down in the, the Clearwater uh, tournament. It was a runner at third, slap her up, I said, just bounce it once. If you do that, she's gonna score, and she hit it over the pitcher's head, and we walked it off, and she got mobbed at first base. Well, this was a little bigger scenario, obviously, and I would've done the same exact thing that Karen Weekly did. I would've walked the first kid to load the bases to get a force at the plate. That was a smart move. Kristen had struck out twice before that. Not this time. Got enough of it, hit a high high chopper, short stop, there's no way. Uh, and Lauren Johnson's fast, and you know, Kristen just put it on the ground, we're gonna win. Um, but just a, a, she had a great weekend too. Kristen was awesome in the leadoff spot. So we don't win that series without her hitting what, number one. What's your favorite dugout prop? Say it again. What's your favorite dugout prop? Oh gosh. <laughs> uh, probably the sunglasses that goes on the palm tree. Uh, I put them on a couple times uh, for good luck, but uh, they're pretty cool. All right, thanks guys. Thanks a lot, you guys.